Hello everyone, this is one male praying mantis, and this is another. As you may have noticed, they look different. This one is brown, this one can climb on glass. Interestingly, the mantis's color reflects its ability to climb on glass. They are not two different species, as you might think. Today's program for the insects includes breakfast, a walk through the maze, and meeting a beautiful female. As you might guess, mantises can change color. Their color is determined by the conditions in which they grew up. Color adaptation is essentially a protective mechanism that allows mantises to blend into the background to avoid detection by birds and to improve their hunting abilities. Mantises that live on the ground or among fallen leaves are brown. Green mantises live among leaves and plants, and they imitate the color of their surroundings as well as chameleons do. Their lifestyle is also reflected in their behavior. Green mantises prefer to climb walls or hang upside down. Meanwhile, brown mantises are more down to earth. In the spirit of hospitality, we offer each praying mantis a cockroach. Since both insects crawl on the sand, it is easier for the ground-dwelling mantis to hunt. Mantises usually sit in one place and wait for prey to appear, but this brown mantis must have been very hungry because it started hunting on its own and caught the cockroach almost immediately. Although this mantis is male, it acts like a female by biting off its opponent's head. What about the green one? It waited for the cockroach to appear on the ceiling and pounced on it like lightning. But it missed. It happens. Now, it is preparing for its second attempt, but it misses again. The mantis does not give up though and catches the net instead of the cockroach. The mantis and the cockroach are now at different heights while the mantis eats its meal. What's funny is that even without its head, the cockroach continues to resist. They say this insect can live for several days without its head, eventually dying of exhaustion or dehydration. Have you ever noticed how many antennae cockroaches have? They're funny insects, if not for the fact that they carry dangerous diseases. The green mantis is obviously hungry too and has started hunting the cockroach. Well, well, with such poor hunting skills, it's no wonder it's still hungry. Another unsuccessful attempt. It's really hungry and won't wait for the prey to appear. It's going to meet it itself. Maybe the mantis is cross-eyed. I've lost count of how many times it has missed. Here, you can clearly see how badly he missed. Meanwhile, the brown mantis has already finished its meal. Now full and satisfied, the mantis lies on the sand, resting. Could hunting skills really depend on color? I would have thought so, but then I looked closely at these videos and realized that the mantis's legs are both turned to the left. You can see it clearly here. That's the problem. Its legs seem to be crossed over each other. Perhaps it's a congenital defect, or maybe it jumped unsuccessfully and dislocated them. This is precisely why it does not like to move on the ground. However, as we can see, both legs are mobile. The green one feels more confident on vertical surfaces, but it's clearly limited when it comes to hunting. I feel sorry for green. While he makes new attempts to have lunch, we continue. We will create a maze. For this, we glued a blue background onto a board and prepared cardboard partitions. The blanks are all in quantities and sizes that recreate a complete, reduced copy. This is the maze we made for our animals back in 2018. We ended up with this maze for our predatory insects. All that was left was to find a female mantis. We didn't have to search long. She climbed onto my car herself, and a couple of minutes before that, I found another male. By the way, how can you tell if a baby is a boy or a girl? This is a boy. 
this is a girl. The easiest way to determine gender is to count the number of segments on the back of the abdomen. Females have six segments, which are clearly visible in these frames, especially if you pause the video. The male's abdomen has eight segments, which are also easy to count. Often, males have wings, like this male, for example. However, this is not a mandatory condition. The previous two males have eight segments on their abdomen, but no wings. Since we are going to put two males and one female in the maze, we replace the defective male with a newly found one. We still want strong future offspring, so the gene pool must be appropriate. Incidentally, the new green male is one and a half times larger than his brown counterpart. Like any green one, he has a habit of climbing to the top. They categorically do not like being at the bottom because they do not feel safe there. This is definitely not the case with the brown one, which blends in well with the sand. It's time for the maze. First, we put our girl inside. Now that the female is inside, we need to add two males. We'll place one here. To find the female, he'll have to follow this path. He may turn the wrong way though, and end up at a dead end. The second mantis will be placed here. He may get lost once or twice before finding the female. We release the praying mantises. The brown one jumps into a dead end. The green one finds itself in a maze and decides to go straight, also ending up in a dead end. Despite hitting a wall, the green praying mantis continues to break through. The brown one also hopes to break through the wall, or is he waiting for the door to open? It doesn't wait though. It turns around and stomps in the opposite direction, but there's another dead end ahead. Can't he see it? Maybe the praying mantis isn't the smartest insect and doesn't know how to use the maze. Meanwhile, the female just sits in one place. The brown mantis circles back to the starting point. Look how the mantis stretches. It can bite its nails on its hind leg. If the male is even slightly active, the female doesn't think about moving, apparently deciding that it's not worth the energy. After an hour of observation, only the green male was still active, so we will change our strategy since he is more active. We place the male and female praying mantises in the same container. Based on all external characteristics, including its wings and the number of segments, we are confident that it is a male. We are also confident that the other is female. They exhibit identical behavior, both taking up position on the ceiling. It's time to remove the dividing partition. The praying mantises are still in position. The boy is looking at the girl, who is looking out the window. The boy was active, but when he saw the female, he froze. The female began to move, luring him with her movements. In the maze, it was a little different. After 20 minutes, the female had visited many places while the male remained motionless. Now the girl is slowly but surely walking toward the boy. Judging by how carefully she approaches him, she probably realizes that he is a member of her species. However, the boy does not appreciate this encounter and decides to attack. They have now established eye contact and are looking at each other. Soon, the girl got bored and left. The boy remains sitting in the same place while the girl continues to walk around him. She comes back, sits opposite him, and moves her abdomen. It's interesting to wonder whether they see each other as prey or as an opportunity to continue their species. Maybe they are having a dialogue right now. She says to him, Darling, don't be afraid. Come closer. He replies, No, I still want to live. Half an hour passes, and the mantis boy finally takes his first steps toward the female, losing his head with love, at least figuratively. Now, he is near her. If he weren't big and strong, he surely would have become a victim. Then, the girl slapped him again and ran away. Apparently, she was offended by the previous incident. She sits with her leg tapping on the glass, and the boy doesn't understand what he did wrong. 
He has such a deep gaze that he could hypnotize anyone. The boy Mantis walked around for a while, gathered his courage, and decided to approach the girl. He planned to strike up a conversation, get acquainted, and see how things went from there. He came very close to her, but he couldn't figure out her intentions, so he decided to back off. Did she want to be on top and mount him? I thought praying mantises reproduced differently. Now she was looking up at him from below. Admit it, do you really want to bite his head off? The boy was determined though and wanted to try his luck again. He stood in front of her but was met with a menacing stare. Then came the gesture, don't even come near me, I'm mad at you. Tired of these attempts, the green boy sat down and froze for about half an hour. The girl continued to walk around, clearly not liking that she was no longer being noticed. Now, she was close to the mantis. The boy was probably in shock. First, he didn't let her near him. Then, she came herself, sat down next to him, and washed herself. He would lose his head faster from such behavior than the female, who, by the way, sat next to him for five minutes, and then left. Less than two minutes later, the girl returned. Seemingly upset that she had been ignored the last time, she sat down behind him and waited. The girl circled around him, but he didn't react. Come on, man, you'll definitely end up without offspring and won't be able to continue the family line. In short, the chance was missed. He froze in place while the girl walked around in circles. The boy mustered his courage, approached her, and sat down next to her. However, they quickly made it clear that he was no longer welcome. Then the girl got up and went downstairs, and the boy began to wash himself. He hadn't finished tidying up when the woman returned. I sat with my camera for many hours and took almost 350 shots. I have a question. Where do mantises get their children from? Maybe things will work out now. The mantis was spotted again and had to retreat. There were many more unsuccessful attempts in general, but I decided to film this process at all costs. I reduced the size of the container to its minimum size. Hopefully something will come of such close contact. While the boy washes downstairs, the girl does the same upstairs preparing for the meeting. Here it is. The moment. But something went wrong. I thought the boy was supposed to jump on top. Now the girl is sitting on her fifth point, or whatever number it is for her, and looking up. Even in a confined space, they are in no hurry to continue the family line. They play king of the hill. She falls, then he falls. This is what their fighting together in a confined space looked like for about 10 minutes. Finally, we waited for the moment for which we started the video. It was the longest skirmish we managed to film all day. Without exaggeration, I spent 12 hours with a camera in my hand, but I still don't intend to give up. A large-scale project is currently in the works, and perhaps in those conditions, I will get the shots I wanted to take today. We are not giving up and will continue. That's all for now. Bye-bye.